Welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, proud to be the world's number one community for brilliant childcare leaders. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the childcare industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches and are the top selling childcare business book authors of all time. This episode is sponsored by Elif Childcare Insurance. Give Blake a call at 972-232-2258 to get a free quote on childcare business insurance today. Let's welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast, our hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to episode 45 of the Childcare Genius Podcast. Hello, everybody. We're Brian and Carol Dupre. We're your humble host today. And today we're going to talk a little bit about real estate as an investment strategy for your childcare building and also additional real estate you could buy like residential and commercial as investments. And why would we want to talk about real estate? Because you're going to eventually want to retire, right? Right. And have some income when and you have retire. Some income when you retire. So the first, we've been in childcare business for about 25 years, and we bought our first property only a little over eight years ago, maybe nine years ago now. So for the first 15 years, we didn't own a single thing. Right. We leased every daycare building. We had opened, I think, seven schools at that point, leased every single one of them. And then there was a certain lady I'm married to kept saying, honey, and I think you said, honey, we need to start buying real estate. And my answer was? At first, <laughs> that you didn't want to. <laughs> At first, um, not knowing what I did, no, I was scared. I didn't want to take on debt. I was scared to uh, to go borrow money. Um, and I you know, kind of was comfortable. Yeah, right. didn't really want to worry about things like that. And then he said, honey, I think you're a lot smarter than I am. So maybe I'll listen to you. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I said. I say that now. I mean, I was smart when I married you. I definitely married up. That's for sure. And I'm still married up. But anyway, so I did take her advice and we started buying property and we started buying the daycare centers that we were in. We got leverage on our landlords. We were able to put them in positions where they kind of didn't have to sell to us, but we made it very advantageous to them to do so. We ended mm -hmm. up buying uh, three of the four buildings that we were in at the point. Uh, I think we had four out of five. Five schools we had, we had owned four at that point. And uh, and one of our buildings that we actually still lease today, because it's still a le great lease deal that I'd never want to buy it, because it would cost so much more to buy. So sometimes leasing is a good strategy, but we've gone and bought. And since then, we've bought... Um, We've gone and branched out into uh, investment properties, multifamily properties, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. So we're going to give you some tips on what to do and what not to do in as far as real estate is concerned mm -hmm. and things that maybe you can consider doing on your own as well. Real estate is such a better investment vehicle than the stock market, than putting the money in a CD or putting it under your mattress. We found out it's such a great rate of return. It's done very well for us. Uh, in eight short years, our real estate business is much bigger. It's over twice the size of our childcare business, brings in twice the revenue. And just in eight years, we've been in the childcare business for 25 years. So it's, it has the potential to bring in massive amounts of income, Great percentage of return, even better than you get in a childcare business. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today in a solo episode, just her and I just talking about real estate. So I'm going to give you some tips first. So when if you decide that you do want to buy real estate, um, it's good to have liability protections. So a lot of times you get different advice when it comes to opening your childcare business. When you open multiple locations, some some experts say open them up at each in a separate LLC. Some say open up, you know, opening with one one business for all your uh, one LLC or one S corp for all your locations is fine. That's that's personal strategy. We're not going to talk about that today. Talk between you and your attorney on that issue. But when it comes to real estate, you really do need to have each property in a separate LLC. 
and um, to also talk to your CPA. You said, well, I don't want a separate LLC because then I have to do a separate tax return. Not necessarily. There's a thing called the disregarded entity for tax purposes. You can work on that with your LLC, uh, with your uh, CPA, rather. We do not do separate uh, tax returns for each LLC, but we have 20 different LLCs that we own. Uh, we have a holding company. We have a property management company. We have uh, 18 different property LLCs, and we have other companies as well that we own. So uh, it, it gets a lot to manage. Um, but we still only have to do three different tax returns for three different companies. We do one simple, one simple tax return for all properties that we own. Uh, and But then again, work with your uh, attorney and your um, CPA on strategy. But a separate LLC for each property helps you with liability. If something happens at one, it burns down, you got a lawsuit, somebody dies, God forbid, all they could take is that one LLC. They can't go take all your other properties. They can't touch your childcare property. There's a lot of advantages to that. And a rule of thumb, never own a property as an S corporation. My CPA told me uh, it has to do something with passing it on to the next generation. If you ever wanted to sell it, there's tax liabilities. So make sure when you own LLC, you own it as a, um, you don't own it as an S corporation. You do it as an LLC with tax structure. Um, so you are heavily involved in the real estate, Carol. You have been now for quite a while. What do you, what do you, what's one of, what is the thing you like the most about owning real estate? I think that the thing I like the most about owning it is you get the, it's like passive income. We have to do very little work once, you know, once the properties are paid down and we're getting the rental income, unless something breaks, which we have maintenance people for that, there's really not very much we have to do, but the income comes in every month. Right. So if you were to put a million dollars in a child care business or a million dollars into a rental property, let's compare the two. In a, if you open a new child care center with that million dollars, you've got to hire 30 or 40 employees mm -hmm. to run that. And you've got mm -hmm. overhead costs and you've got to buy supplies. You've got to deal with state regulatory issues mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to taking a million dollars and buying into property. And you can do both. I'm not saying not to do the child care because right. we're in that business, but I'm saying as a diversification strategy, taking a million dollars, that'll leverage $4 million in borrowing or $3 million in borrowing. So you could buy $4 million in property with a million dollars and that can produce hundreds of thousands of dollars in rental income to you net every year. And you probably won't have any employees, maybe have one. You yeah. can hire a property management company and they could do all the maintenance for you. So you don't even have to I hire anybody. Can you anything. can farm everything out. We, we have, um, 65 different units so we deal with 65 different tenants we manage our own properties ourselves we have a property management company we have two full-time maintenance workers who do the work on that so we only have to deal with two people and that's for a seven million dollar portfolio of real estate that produces hundreds of thousands of dollars uh almost a half a million dollars a year in uh net rental income um which is nice for very little work yep. on return. So the passive income is really sweet. Um, it, it's it's great. So tip number two, you want to look for a, when you're going to look at a property, you want to look at a, what a property can be, not what it is. Exactly. So, you know, when we looked at um, the property on Stillwater we bought last year, you remember you and I going in there and looking at it and it had been on the market for quite a while. I'm like, okay, what are people seeing here that they don't like? And we found some red flags in it, which we turned to our advantage. So we had, there was, there was one area of the building that was kind of structurally looked unsound. So we brought a structural engineer to check it out and realize that, okay, it's really not that bad. It is, you know, 25 years left. We could shore it up and we could take care of that problem. Then they had two rooms um, that could be, they told us could be a separate apartment. So we go down and do our homework. We go down to code enforcement. And we say, can these be an additional unit? And they said, no. It's like, okay, this is why nobody's bought this. They can't expand in here. 
So we talk with the, them and say, can we expand other apartments and use that space to expand other apartments, which will increase the rental income? They said, yes. Okay. So we're thinking now differently than other investors did. So we're, we end up uh, getting this for $30,000 less than asking. Got a great deal on the property. We paid cash for this building. Um, and immediately we're renovating those units and making them bigger to create more rental income. It's going to be a great rental income for us. So what I'm trying to get at here is don't see things as they are, see as they can be. Can you increase the rent right? or can you reduce expenses to increase your revenue? What can you make as far as a bottom line? We don't even look at a property unless it gives you at least at least 8% to 10% ROI um, on, uh, so let me give you an example. Maybe if you buy a $400,000 piece of property, it should be returning at least $32,000 a year of net income to you. So that for that 400,000, that's 8% return uh, ROI, that's gotta be at least 32,000. We tend to look around 10% to 12%. But 8% in most markets is a really nice return. So if you want to buy a $400,000 piece of property, you're looking for $32,000 a year net income. If you buy an $800,000, you're looking for $64,000. That's an 8% return minimum. And Again, we don't look at what the rent is. We look at what the rent should could be. be. Could be or should be. Because we we bought one property that... They had one tenant that had been there for 20 years, had very low rent, and the other tenant was a family member, so had very low rent. So yes. to an investor, it looked like this property would not be worth it. It wouldn't make any money. Well, we had both tenants leave and rented them for double what they were renting them for. So don't see things as they are. See things as they can be, and that's how you do it. And inside our Child Care Genius University coaching program, we actually teach all of this. And we actually evaluate deals with our clients. We don't charge for this. That's part of a service with our coaching clients. Uh, and we use real estate as an investment strategy to build our child care uh, business and also a separate business for diversification. Uh, so tip number three is have a good relationship with a banker. Have a great banker, even if you haven't borrowed money yet, even if you haven't established a uh, real estate investment business yet, get a good relationship with a banker because um, once you do that, you're going to be borrowing millions of dollars over the next 10 to 15 years, and you're going to want a great relationship. It's better if you could borrow all the money from one bank. They do not like it when you're going bank shopping and go bank to bank to bank. Right. So we have a credit union that we use. They do all our commercial lending. We borrowed millions from them. They give us good rates. We're really good customers of them. We put all our daycare money through there. So millions flows in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, and they charge us zero fees, which is great. And the interest rates, we're getting half a half a percent lower than most than what they have on the market. So because we're such a good customer, we're able to get great markets, great right. rates. And we competitively shop to make sure they're giving us the best rates because we've been there so long and we know they are and they are. So that's a good one. Um, what's tip number four, Carol? Patience is the key to success. We've been patient. We have. We've lost some deals because of it. Yep. You know, and I kick myself when I drive by, I was driving by one, uh, uh, five units that we missed out on on Oak Street there that uh, I, every time I drive by Carol and I were, we drove us, we rented scooters the other day in, in our town and we were driving around and we drove right past these properties that I should have got. And it was early on in our investing, uh, investment uh, strategy. And I thought I was going to be cool and coy and, you know, try to low, make a low ball offer and, and somebody else got the deal. So sometimes patience is the key to success and knowing when you have a good deal and it comes from experience. And again, having a coach that can help you and guide you uh, like like we do, we, we coach our clients into this. Um, we've helped clients occur millions, millions of dollars of real estate deals. Um, not many child care coaches help on the real estate side. It's just something we're really good at and we like to help. Um, another tip we're going to give you is to get licensed as a real estate agent to save a lot of money in commissions. My nephew is a realtor. That's why we have never got licensed because we give him all the business. And he's one of the top agents in Maine, thanks to part to us, 
we've done billions with him right now we've got a deal right now uh we've got one 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 transaction it's 1.5 million it's 45,000 commissions he's going to make on this one transaction that could have been in our pocket but we give it to him and um so if you were to get licensed, you could save a lot of money on your own commissions. And also it gives you a right. special designation as a real estate professional, which allows you to take passive income losses against other active income. Uh, talk to your CPA about that. So being a real estate agent will give you huge advantages. It also gives you the ability to see the properties as soon as you come and as soon as that. they come on the That's market. Good point, Carol. And it allows you to find things uh, even right as they're coming in and maybe find some off-market deals. We've been able to buy a few things off market just by having feelers out and talking to people and, and also being part of a uh, a community. That's another tip. I don't even know if I have that on here. Um, but a tip is join your local organization of owners, apartment owners. We have a thing called the Greater, Barrier, ba Greater, Greater Bangor Area Apartment Owners and Managers Association. And we go to their meetings every single month and they teach us tips, tools, and strategies to be better landlords. We learn um, different strategies on, you know, if you have to evict somebody, what to do on the lo local laws. We have a lobbyist that lobbies and stuff. So definitely join and you'll learn a lot. That's that's taught us quite a bit over the last couple of years. Um, another tip is to manage your own properties. That means hiring a maintenance person that you maybe could share with your child care centers until you can get a full time one. Uh, until you have a few properties, you might want to hire a property management company and let them mm -hmm. manage it, let them do the maintenance. You're giving up maybe eight to 10% of the rents in there, but then you don't have to worry about getting a call in the middle of the night. They're going to get the call. Um, tip number seven. Start small with a duplex or a triplex to learn the ropes. Yeah, we did. We started with it. Our first Four. property, besides our daycare property, our first residential one was a two unit. We call it a duplex. It was a two unit upstairs and downstairs. And I remember this vividly is right before COVID. Um, no, we'd already bought a couple ones, but from uh, from Andy, we'd already bought a couple units. But I remember um, this duplex, it was a great deal. It was a cash transaction. We went in there and we were able to turn this around and make good money profits mm -hmm. off that. Uh, so right when you start going in on your own, this was the first time we had ventured away from, um, we had bought a, a lot of our properties from a, uh, a gentleman who happened to own one of our daycare properties and he sold us almost his entire portfolio. So that got us in. And this duplex I'm talking about was the first deal we did on our own. Uh, and we actually paid cash for that. I was like, oh, only $115,000 for a duplex. And uh, we're getting good rental income. We actually have doubled the rents there in the yeah. last three years. Got new tenants in. That's why we like tenant turnover, because we're yeah. able to up the rents up. We don't like to really raise them too high on existing tenants. We do raise them, just not super high. But when new families come in and new tenants, the rates are going to go to market for sure. Um, so the next tip is going to be attend our leverage conference in Jamaica. So we're going to give you a few tips here today. But we have a whole day in Jamaica dedicated to the financial area of childcare. So the, on Friday, the 22nd of September in Jamaica, we have a whole five-day conference, but we're spending a whole day talking about the finances part. And a good part of that is going to be talking about how to leverage your business and how to diversify into real estate, either through commercial properties, through your childcare centers, or through residential properties mm -hmm. Uh, being able to diversify. So we're going to give you a couple tips with that. Uh, so, you know, in, in, in our country, I, I can only speak to American real estate. If you're, if you're listening to us in a foreign country, I don't know real estate in your country, but uh, real estate in America allows you to build wealth um, quickly. Yeah. Um, you, you could build wealth over time. Uh, and would you rather own, I like this, this good analogy. So would you rather own 1% of one restaurant or 1% 1 of 100 restaurants? You mean 100% of one restaurant? 100% if you own restaurant, you I, want to own 100% of one own. restaurant or 1% 1 of 100 restaurants? 1% of 100. Everybody would probably say 1% of 100. Now, why would that be? Because you'd be diversified. If one of your restaurants burns down, right. you still have 99. But if one that burns down is the only one you have, you're out of business. 
And that is why a lot of daycare owners, multi-center owners, buy and have multiple centers for that exact reason. They're diversifying. They're trying to get more. Mm -hmm. They're trying to spread the risk and know that if a parent leaves, they might leave over and go to one of your other schools because of they're moving. Yeah. Employees can shift between schools and you're spreading the risk out. Well, with real estate, it's kind of the same thing. You're buying multiple properties, you're spreading the risk out, you're increasing, and you're getting a, a small percentage of revenue from multiple different properties. Um, so let's talk about, now, would you like to own 1% of 100 businesses? What if that business was Blockbuster Video? And you had 1% of 100 Blockbuster Video locations. How would you be doing today? Throw that analogy out. But just because you have diversified shred doesn't mean you are in the right business. Uh, we don't know what the child care business is going to be like in the next 10 years. And you could have one daycare center or you could have 10 child care centers all under the same name. What if something happens to your one brand and you get a bad reputation? It could transcend to that entire brand. So that's why we diversify into real estate, because we wanted to make sure that our child care business, we had something to fall back on. Should the government regulate us out of child care, which could happen, the government can get free child care. And like Canada, Canada has kind of decimated their child care industry uh, and made it really hard to make a profit in it. That could happen here. And just one Congress can do that in the United States. So we're using real estate to try to diversify a little bit and make sure that you have income coming in should things happen. So there's power in diversifying. I'm going to teach a lot of these strategies uh, in Jamaica. So like I said, in eight, eight years, we have 65 units. We have over $7 million in holdings. Half of our properties are owned free and clear. And we're going to teach the strategy of how we did that in Jamaica. Like, how did you accumulate millions of dollars, uh, over $5 million in equity in our properties in eight years? How is that even possible? Uh, we're going to teach that strategy. And another strategy is we saved, how much money have we saved in taxes? We have saved over a half a million dollars in, in taxes for our child care center in the last three years. Um, who wouldn't want to pay less taxes? Right. So buying properties allows you to offset those losses, providing you have a real estate designation, if you're a licensed real estate agent or you're a real estate professional, which we are. We just wait a minute, Brian, you weren't licensed agents. No, but we dedicate 20 hours a week to the real estate business, our portfolio, which gives us an IRS designation as a real estate professional, not licensed, a professional, which yeah. allows us to take some of these losses uh, and accelerated depreciation over and offset our child care income. We're going to teach these strategies in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, and some of you have been talking about investing in real estate syndication. I know that's the that's the latest trend, you know, buying into multifamily apartment buildings and everybody putting in the combined a bunch of people put in eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 million dollars and you buy this multi-unit apartment. Um, it sounds good in theory. Uh, the cash returns, cash on cash returns are pretty dismal. I mean, I've seen some of the numbers on those things. You don't have any control. You're, you're at the beck and mercy of the people who buy it, who manage it. They're the ones who decide if they're going to, you know, what they do with the money, how they sell it, uh, when they sell it, what you get. Um, the, they take huge management fees. It's, it, the people at the top do make a lot more money when it, when it comes to this. Um, and that's why we get 32% to 40% returns on our money, as opposed to, you know, not even get a fraction of that in syndicated deals. But now you say we do work a little hard for that money. We do manage it. Um, but we are able to hold that money ourselves and do right. it. Now, Brian, you just said 32 to 40%, but earlier you're talking about 8% to 10%. Where's the disconnect? We're going to show you that in Jamaica, but let me give you an example real quick. That $400,000 property that's returning $32,000 a year worth of net income, I only had to put $100,000 up to buy that. So I have $100,000 of my money that's returning now $32,000 a year back to me. That's a 32% return. That's how you get the number. And most of the time we're getting 10%, which is actually 40% on our money. So we're going to talk about how to leverage 
bank's money. We're putting up 100, the bank's putting up 300. So we're getting the profits from a $400,000 asset that we've only had to put $100,000 in. And we're going to teach you some of those strategies. Now, we're not brokers. We don't invest for you. We don't make a penny off you on real estate. This is just strictly an education. We don't charge anything in our coaching program for real estate advice. This is part of what we do. So we want to, at Child Care Genius, help people with real estate. When we go to, when you go to our conference, you're going to learn a lot of this. Well, I'm going to be there for the whole week. You can pick our brains. Our entire portfolio is at your fingertips. We will show you our numbers. We have nothing to hide. Um, so what are you waiting for? Um, do you think they should buy a ticket today to conference? I think you should buy a ticket today because they're three ninety nine. And they um, go up. so we just dropped their price to three ninety nine. We're going to be selling them for the next till June fifteenth, and then we're probably going to close it out. Then we should be sold out. Um, it'll go up to four ninety nine on June sixteenth if we decide to keep ticket sales open. Right. It's a ticket; they're never going to be lower than they are now. Three ninety nine a piece. Come in, learn from us. Learn from our entire coaching team. It's going to be coaching there. But if you want to learn about real estate, advanced techniques, um, I'm going to give each person a personalized plan to build a $10 million real estate portfolio in the next 10 to 15 years. One that you could leave to your children and grandchildren. Our real estate portfolio by 2025 will be worth over $10 million. And that's from zero uh, eight years ago. And in, in 10 or 11 short years, we'll have built a $10 million portfolio. And we're going to teach you how to do that using other people's money. That's the goal part. Borrowing, getting leverage, using that, the power of it, having the tenants pay your mortgage. Isn't it sweet having the tenants pay your mortgage? <laughs> oh, my God. It's so exciting having all that money come in every month. Almost seventy thousand dollars a month in rental income coming in, and we do it automated. We don't go. Do you, have you ever gone out and just say, "Hey, can you give me your rent money on the first? No. Everything's ACH. I don't chase rent. Nope, we don't chase rent. Everything's auto draft right out of their bank account, and no pay, no stay. We evict quick without the check. I wish that would have rhymed. We evict quick, but I don't have a rhyme there. And one thing for our conference, we're limiting this to 100 businesses. So it's going to be a small. So you'll have a lot of access to the different people. You know, you can talk to us about real estate or talk to the other people. And um, that's why the tickets will probably all be sold by the. Yep. 15th. We only have, I think we have 18 more spots available. Uh, I think that's what our number is right now. So uh, we are getting close. But we want the people that want to uh, take it to the next level. Right. If you want to build now, another thing to think about is someday you're going to re retire and you may want to sell your child care business, but you're going to want to keep the real estate because that's going to provide you long term income. If you sell your real your child care business, you're only going to get three, maybe four or five times what your net profit is as a sales price. Well, that money would be gone in a couple of years. What are you going to do with that money? You need the long-term real estate to live on passively for the rest of your life. And then that could be passed on to your children as well. There's a chance your children might not want your childcare business. Right. But they're going to want that income from real estate after you've passed on. Our children and our grandchildren will be taken care of for generations to come based on our hard work and what we've done today. So we're going to teach those strategies uh, in Jamaica. So it's the Leverage Conference, childcaregenius.com forward slash leverage. We encourage you to buy a ticket today. Uh, like I said, we just dropped the price this week. It's on sale till June 15th. Um, if you're listening to this after June 15th, the price has already gone up. If we have tickets available, we cap out at 100 businesses because we want to be able to know everybody at the conference. And we want to make sure that we could have one-on-one -on -one time with everybody there. You're going to see me by the pool. You're going to want to know stuff. I'm going to whip out my laptop and I'm going to show you my real estate figures. We have we use a, a, an app called Buildium. Our entire portfolio is on there and it'll be open for anybody to see. We have nothing to hide. 
Um, so we would love to share our knowledge with you and help you. And uh, again, this is no extra cost. It's just come to Jamaica. It's your only chance you're going to get to hear this information because we do not give this information out only at our conference and only inside our coaching program. Um, that's, that's, that's what we do. So either join the coaching program or a little cheaper option, come down to our conference and we'll teach you what we know and, uh, and have a lot of fun doing it. And guess what? It's tax deductible. We're not going to give you a sales pitch while you're down there. We're going to have kind of any vendors. We're just going to, we're only doing four hours a day. So we're done by one o'clock every day. We buy the pool. We have poolside coaching every day. I think Carol and I are poolside coaching three different days in the conference. If you can can't come hang out with us in the afternoons, by the pool, ask us anything. We're there. Uh, we'll see you at the bars at night. We're probably going to go out to the disco one night and do some little Saturday night fever. But I'm going to have a, I think we're going to have a disco night, maybe an 80s theme, dress up a little bit, have a little bit of fun. Maybe a Jamaica night. We could all get in our green and black. We're going to have a lot of fun, aren't we? We are. Are you looking forward to it? I am. Kara and I will be in Jamaica in July. We're actually going to be going to Iberia Star, which is the resort we're going to be at. We're going to make sure everything is set for our stay there. We're going to take some pictures. And also, we're going to be visiting a local preschool or two. We're setting that all up. So we encourage our people to bring some school supplies, some books, some coloring books, some school supplies, snacks, juice boxes for the kids, maybe a soccer ball. And we will deliver that to uh, preschools. And we did this when we were in Jamaica a couple months ago. Was that last month? I can't remember last month. A couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. And it was amazing. The children just absolutely loved the gifts that we brought them. And we're going to do that again in Montego Bay when we're in Jamaica. So the conference again is September 18th through the 22nd. Uh, It's in Montego Bay, Jamaica. And you'd want to come in on Saturday or Sunday, and you want to leave at least Saturday or Sunday the following week. And details on our page, childcaregenius.com forward slash leverage. You can learn there is a booking code. You could save up to 10% on your room. If you use our booking code, there's a video on our website, which explains how to book your room. If you have any other questions, you can email me at brian at childcaregenius.com. That's B-R-I-A-N at childcaregenius.com. And we will conclude episode 45 of the child care genius podcast thank you so much we hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about real estate don't and forget, don't forget to hit the subscribe <laughs> button so you won't miss a future episode of the child care genius podcast we'll see you next week i bye. should have put a little script that said that right <laughs> we'll see you guys next week bye-bye thank you for listening to the child care genius podcast If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help grow your childcare business. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Childcare Genius community.